Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin and today we are foraging for purple sea urchin. Let's go. So I specifically came up here to the Mendocino Coast to take part in the Mendocino County Sea Urchin Festival. This is my friend Callie Dim. She's the owner and operator of the Little River Inn, which overlooks the absolutely beautiful Van Dam State Beach. I had the honor of being asked to be a part of this festival this year, and as a result, I got to lead people in the intertidal zone at low tide, teaching them all about sea urchin ecology, seaweed, sea stars, abalone, and the delicate relationship between these species. In addition, I taught folks how to harvest their own sea urchin and how to process those sea urchins. The general public joined in at Van Dam State Beach later on, where representatives from state parks and the Nature Conservancy came to talk about the kelp forest ecosystem. After the beach demonstrations and discussion concluded, we headed back to the Little River Inn where our chefs showcased these amazing sea delicacies. If you'd like more information on the Sea Urchin Festival or how to get involved, please see all of the links in the description. These sea urchins are amazing, cousins to sea stars, which is why the uni, the reproductive organ, is gonna be arranged in a number five, just like the five arms of a sea star. They date back millions of years. Now in this one little patch right here, there's a whole lot of sea urchins in the bedrock, but there's still a lot of seaweed. But I want to show you that even though this is sort of a, a healthy balance between sea urchin and seaweed, right over here, you're going to see what happens when these guys take over. This is underwater footage from a tide pool, just one random tide pool. And look at how much purple is in here. There's almost no seaweed whatsoever. As I dip the GoPro down in here, on the other side of the same tide pool, the same situation, purple everywhere. In order to forage for sea urchin, whether it's purples or reds, I do recommend some kind of a prying device. This is called an abalone iron or an abalone pry bar. Now we're not legally allowed to take abalone in California anymore because these purple urchins have eaten the majority of the seaweed in certain places which starved out the abalone. That's why the Department of Fish and Wildlife did an emergency closure of the abalone harvest. Here's an example of that. You can actually see all of these purple sea urchins surrounding an abalone. Now these are out of the water because it's low tide, but notice there's no seaweed. However, growing up, we used to use these for abalone, but we'd also use them for scallops, and we'd use them for sea urchin. This size, this is ideal for the larger urchin, like the red urchin, but honestly for these purples, I like a much smaller abalone iron or scallop bar or even a butter knife. When I'm pursuing sea urchins, especially these purples, what I'm doing is I'm looking around for concentrations and I'm hoping that I might see some seaweed around them. If there is no seaweed, I'll pull the sea urchin off and I'll crack it open and just see if there's any decent uni inside. The uni, this beautiful golden color when it's healthy, is the reproductive organ of the sea urchin and it's a delicacy around the world. Remember that sea urchins are sharp. They are not venomous, but if you hit your hand on them hard enough, they will puncture your skin, and they're very brittle, so they can break off inside you. Here you can see I'm testing one. This is what we refer to as a zombie urchin. Often in the middle of a barren, when you crack one open, it has no uni in it. If you crack another and it's also empty, move on and try to find another patch. Once you find a rock with a lot of sea urchin and those sea urchins are full, that's a great place to stop and forage and load up your bucket. Now, I don't want to entirely demonize sea urchin, even though the inside of this tide pool you see here has almost no seaweed at all as a result of overgrazing from sea urchin, which you'll see tucked off in the corner here. Some of the sea urchin in here you're actually not going to see, and the reason is they actually wear hats, or they will protect themselves from sun and predation. That's what you're seeing here. This beautiful little cluster of pebbles is actually a sea urchin covering itself. Really cool. Now again, these sea urchins are acting like invasive species because their native predator, the sunflower star, is locally extinct. 
That does not mean that they actually are an invasive species, though. These are native sea urchins, and I have personally excavated these from archaeological contexts in California going back over 4,000 years. These have been on the menu here in California for generations. In my opinion, although the purple sea urchin is significantly smaller than the red sea urchin, which you can see here, the purple sea urchin is far sweeter. Show, show us, show us. Hold it up. Here. Nice. That is awesome. It's about as big as the purples get, baby. Okay, that's my last one. <laughs> So I've got my 35, now let's go make something delicious. So this you can find in your spice section of most local grocery stores. This is alum, and alum helps with the sea urchin processing. What it does is it actually kind of coagulates the uni. So if the uni is prone to melting, which can happen once it's processed, this sort of stops that process. And this is what is used to treat uni when it's packaged commercially to be exported around the world. Here you can see I've cracked open the shell and very gently scooped the sea urchin tongue out of the sea urchin itself. There will be five tongues, as I've mentioned before, in each sea urchin. So in this particular case, I'm delicately scooping these urchin tongues out, and then I'm going to clean all the guts and other entrails out of it, but I'm going to keep these sea urchin shells whole because I'm going to showcase these as part of our sea urchin catch and cook dish. I did good. That's so good. I did real good good. So the texture is kind of like soft tofu, if you're familiar with like Korean cooking. Babe, that is super good. Mm. That is really, really good. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, wow. okay. Mm. This is like the prettiest steamed egg I've ever made. It's beautiful. <laughs> All right, honey, this was a total success. Part of the pigment from the actual shell kind of leached in or bled into the very edge of the the steamed egg so it has this like purple kind of like a, a rind on the outside it's really pretty but we were not expecting that yeah we just thought as cool as sea urchins look and we you know it's safe it's just calcium calcium carbonate why not cooking them mm -hmm. this was worth the wait mm -hmm. It's totally delicious, and it's beautiful, mm -hmm. and it I was like the easy. Kick. Yeah, yeah, the kick is nice. Good hot oil. It's so good. I already finished mine. Yeah, I'm starting to think we should have done two each. That is so good. Mm. Oh. Alrighty, folks. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give us a thumbs up, share, comment, all that good stuff. And until next time, keep the old ways alive. If you'd like to learn how to do this on your own, 
you can come on out with me. I'm guiding here in California, teaching people all kinds of coastal foraging, including foraging for sea urchin. Diane's a huge fan of uni, and something I'm a huge fan of is Diane. I also really love this steamed egg that she makes. <laughs> In his belly, you will find a new definition of pain and suffering as you are slowly digested over a thousand years. Yeah.